You can learn quite a bit just by watching these videos. What you don't have are the three manuals that you need to go along with these videos. As long as the videos are free, they're free. Watch them and learn what you can. But there are, there are three manuals that you need to go along with these videos, and here they are. These are the three manuals that you need to follow along with these videos. Connect Components Workbench Part 1, Part 2, and then the third volume is Panel View 800 and PowerFlex 525. We've already done a few videos on the PowerFlex 525, but we didn't finish them. And we've just started doing the Panel View 800. Now remember that in Part 1 and Part 2, at the end of certain lab projects, it will tell you to go to the third volume, do that panel view lab, and then come back to the volume that you're in and continue. You don't have to buy these manuals. You can watch the videos free. In preparation for P2, which we're going to do after we do the next Micro 800 project, I had you add two screen objects and label them my first bit and my second bit. I also had you to create a new screen called Sequence, which is where you put these two, and then go to the main screen and add a Go To Screen button. You basically copy pasted I.O., put it right above it, named it Sequence in the configuration, then went to Properties and assign it to the new screen you just created down here. Okay, so that's where we left it before we created the next Micro 800 project. Now we're gonna step aside, create that project, and then come back. We're still looking at the same project, but we're basically switching from down here, the panel view project, up to the Micro 820 project. We minimized the panel view manual, and we brought back up part one of the CCW Micro 800 manual, and we are on page 77. Now, I may have renamed this project at this point, page 76, because that's what it is in the lab project manual, the hard copy. But I've since added some content, which now bumps it to page 77. You see here, I'm on page 77. And remember, those page numbers can change. All I did was I didn't change CCW. I did rename it. We can go back and look at earlier projects as we progress. But then I minimized the Panel View 800 manual and brought back up this manual on page 77. I had you right click on programs and add a ladder diagram, then double click on it to open it up. Then I had you drop in an OTE. Now they call it a direct coil, but notice it's slash output energize, OTE. CCW, this is version 20, but version 13 will give you this, this same look. Version 20 is really only needed for some of the newer processors with an E in the part number, not for what we're doing. You're probably using 13. That is the best for this learning program. But CCW has progressed in how you can add instructions. Originally, you could only add them from the toolbar. There's the toolbox over here. See, here you have a direct coil. The reason I don't particularly care for doing it this way is because when I pick it, I can't see the rung behind this toolbox. So if I click here, say I want to drop it here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down, and here's where I want it. But notice there's only one plus symbol. I can only, no matter where I let go of it, as long as that plus symbol is apparent, Clear over here, I could drop it here, but anywhere that I'm at that I can see the plus symbol, I can let go and it'll end up in the right place. And I had you name it my first bit. Now the scope in the manual was micro 810, but it just means controller tag. I'm gonna go down here to the bottom and where it says new, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna type in my first bit. It's a Boolean, my first bit, okay. And so I have an unconditional rung. Whenever the program runs, it will turn on that bit. And whenever the program doesn't run, you will find out what it does. 
just for grins, let's go do that right now, regardless of what I said in the book. I'm going to save this. I have a new name up here, Micro 801, Part 1, Page 76, First Pro Wrong Program Wrong. I'll save it, and now I'm going to, I could build it and then download it, but instead I'm just going to download it. There are no real project values yet, but I'm going to download it with project values to portray a good habit. I'm going to drag, well, I've already drugged the 820 over here. So you can see we're in the run mode. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the variables, global variables, and then I'm going to drag those over here, narrow it up a little bit so we can see the logical value. This turns on my first bit. So we'll go down to my first bit down here. Physical value is not relevant because there is no physical value. It's just a bit in memory. Let me put it in the program mode so you can watch my first bit down here. And you can see my first bit up here in the logic. Let's put it in the program mode. We're in the program mode. And notice it still shows that the wrong is true, which is no surprise. And it's showing that my first bit is on. In other words, the bit is on. So you can look down here. I'm going to uncheck this. And now you see the rung is still true because it's unconditional. But notice my first bit is now off. I'm going to put it back in the run mode. And you see that over here it's, it's back on and it shows on here. We had you disconnect. In other words, go offline. And now we're going to add another instruction to our logic. Several ways you can do that. You can go to Toolbox, and you can go to Direct Contact. Or, now that they've improved the menu, and you can go up here and just drag down a true if on. This instruction is true if the bit that it addresses in memory is on. And I realize that they call it a Direct Contact or, I think, an XIC. <coughs> I don't call it that. And this was my second bit. Now, we already added these tags or these variables. You see the type forward, it comes up MY, and then it shows my first bit. Right below it is my second bit. Pick that, and voila, there it is. We also went through a little explanation on downloading, a little bit more detail, with the messages, messages that come up down here at the bottom of the screen. We're going to skip all that. You can read that in the manual. And I explained you can build and then download, but when you download, it's going to build anyway. So I just hit download. I'm assuming, of course, that my controller is connected. It says connection failed. So I'm going to cancel and look to see what is wrong with my connection. And I can see what it is. I'm going through the remote LCD. I unplugged that cable to use it for something else. Now I'm going to erase the connection path and reconnect it. Now I'm going to download. Download with project values. That's a good habit. There are some circumstances in the field where you don't want to do that, but hopefully by the time you get that far in your learning sequence, you'll know when to do it and when not to do it. Remember, you've got data values offline and data values online. And you don't want to overwrite your latest data values. We've downloaded and we're now online. And then what I did is I opened up the global variables, unpinned it, moved it over here. Well, first I'm gonna go shorten up this. I only put this over here so I can see what mode it's in. It's kind of irritating. I can look up here and see if it, if it says connected, then I know I'm online but I would rather see something that says run program because you can be connected and be in the program mode. So I'm gonna move my data table over here because I want to observe my first bit, my second bit in the data table while I'm playing with the logic. This rung says, if this bit is on in memory, then this is true, then turn on this bit in memory. We're reading my second bit and this instruction right here is true if this bit that it addresses in memory is on. It's off right now. 
my second bit. The text is blue. When you see blue text, that means off. When you see blue instruction, especially on this half, that means false. This instruction right here will follow the state of this bit. This instruction right here, this OTE, looks like a relay coil. It is never true or false. The rung is true or false. The instructions are true or false. I'm going to toggle Boolean value, and you see that now my second bit is on, and you can witness that over here, right here. See, my second bit. Now, I toggled it on here. I can toggle it off. I can check it on here. Same result. And if I try to uncheck my first bit, it, in a way it is successful, but you notice that it's this doesn't match this. I'm going to click here and notice that this does not follow this over here. That's very irritating. I'm going to try something. You see my first bit shows unchecked. My second bit shows checked. I'm going to delete this, reopen the global variables, and drag it back over here, narrow it down, and go down to, now see it's correct now. There's a f refresh issue in Connected Components Workbench. They are improving this software. Every new version has improvements. This is version 13. I was using version 20 for the first half of this video. I got so frustrated with the fact that these screens would not refresh correctly that I stopped, completely removed version 20 from my laptop and then installed version 13 again. Hopefully this will work better. You can always open up your variables display. Now see, I turn this off from here, but not from here. It still shows on here. I think that's the issue. If I toggle it off here, see it comes back on and now it's correct. So if you uncheck it here, whoop, see, it rechecked itself. That's exactly what it didn't do 30 seconds ago. Let's not worry about it. Let's just continue on. And what I showed you in the manual is that you can go through some different iterations with program mode. Let's go to the program mode, just do one. Okay, we're in the program mode. I'm going to toggle that bit off and notice that it's correct over here. It's correct here, it shows the rung is false. And if I go back to the run mode, now my first bit went off. Remember it was still on in memory, because the last thing my first bit heard from the running program was you're on. It was never told it was off until I changed the state of my second bit to off and then went back to the run mode. That's pretty much all that we were showing you in that part of the lab project. There should be enough discussion in this video for you to fill in the blanks. And if you are in doubt, then you need to redo the lab and keep doing it and exercising this until it is explicitly buried in your memory. At this point, it, it tells you to go to the next lab project in the panel view 800 manual. That's what we're going to do. Previously, I had you duplicate. I had to go to the IO screen and take one of these multi-state indicators, copy it, and then paste it into the new screen that you titled sequence. And then I had you change the appearance. So it's my second bit for state zero and the same for state one. And then I had you duplicate this one and then change the text to my first bit for both states. Then of course you had to go to properties, go to the read tag and pick my first bit. But bef and then the same thing for my second bit. And I see that I didn't change that one yet, so I'll do that now. Now the text is changed and the read memory location is changed. I also pointed out if you, you had to go to tag and make sure that you had those two tags already in the tag database for your HMI. Because remember, the tag database for the HMI is not the same as the tag database in the PLC. 
This is the tag name in the HMI. These are the memory locations in PLC1. Now, it just so happens, whoops, I see that uh, that one's not correct. Well, it's a good catch. Thank you for pointing that out. I'll change that to my second bit. And now I'm golden. And I've done this so many times, it's easy to make a mistake, which means it's going to be easy for you to make mistakes. If something doesn't work when you're doing your lab, well, just go back and check to make sure that you dotted all the I's and crossed your T's. Now I'm going to save this and then I could validate it, but I'm going to just download it because when you download, it validates it anyway, whether you like it or not. Now it's coming up and it's wanting me to point to the HMI. And what I've noticed is if you shut your computer down or you go into like a sleep mode or something, I didn't have to do this in the first half of this lab project because it was all in a short time frame. You'll see that you're going to lose it once in a while. We want to download this to the panel view to address 11 on our network. Now I'm going to go, it's downloaded and I'm looking at the screen. You can't see it on this screen because this isn't live. I'm going to go back to the PLC, but in, in order to do that, I need, well, I lost that too. We're looking for that one right there. So I want to go back to the run mode. I could have just cl connect, clicked up here on disconnected, then it would say connected. So I did not have to move that out of the way temporarily so you can see over here. And there's my first bit, my second bit. I'm going to, first I'm just going to click on my second bit and Looking at our logic and looking at our database over here, first thing I'm going to do is click on my second bit. Of course, you see this went true, rungs true, turned on my first bit. And I'm looking at my screen, my actual hardware panel view screen, and it responded correctly. I'm going to turn off, well, better yet, I'm gonna put it in the program mode. And of course, my panel view screen still shows the same thing, but I'm going to toggle off my second bit, but see, we're not running. So this rung of logic is not telling my first bit that it should be on or off. It just stays in the last state. I look over at my panel view screen and sure enough, my second bit is off and my first bit is on. We're, we're going step by step here, developing your ability to pick what kind of screen objects you need to display what the operator needs to see to improve and enhance their ability to operate the machine. That's the whole idea of an HMI. It's, it is not for you to express your artistic desires and acumen. It is to make it very clear to the operator what they need to do, the information that they want. Less is more. The less it's on there, the more quickly they're going to figure out what's going on. That was it for that P2, Project 2, in the panel view manual. Next, we're going to go to M3 in part one of CCW for Micro 800.